Hi, I'm Ted Patterson from Critical Path Training. In this video screencast, I'm going to show you how to create custom field types for SharePoint 2010 using the new Visual Studio 2010 SharePoint tools. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with the scenario. So I'm going to open up our test site, internet.wingtip.com. And inside the site, I created this from a blank site and I created a simple list named products using the custom list template. So currently, this list has a single column named title. Now I want to add a new column. So I go to the list settings. I go down and look at the columns that are there. There's just a title column. I want to add a column for product code. So I come up here to create a new column and I want to name it product code and as I look down here I see this list of types. These are the underlying field types that are active on this farm. And so now we're going to go through the process of creating a new field type so that we can see it here and add it as a new column to our list. Let's start by launching Visual Studio and we'll say run as administrator and as I add this in I'm going to go ahead and create a new project and I'll create this from the types of SharePoint project, empty SharePoint project and we'll create this and call this wingtip fields or wingtip custom fields and as I create this new project I also have to note that it has to be created as a farm solution so some of the files that I have to push out are not supported in sandbox solutions now we've created this new project and we're gonna start by adding a new class so we'll add in a new class and this new class we'll call product codes and as I add in well product code We'll create this new class named product code. We're going to go ahead and add a using statement to put Microsoft.SharePoint as an available imported namespace. We take our class file and we need to change it to public. So the class for an underlying field type has to be a public class and it has to inherit from one of the many classes that begin SP field. There's SP field boolean, SP field choice. The one that I'm going to inherit from is SP field text. Now that we've created the class, we need to add two public constructors. So if I say public, and then we go ahead and add a constructor, well, I wouldn't have had to add the default no parameter constructor if that's all that mattered. But instead, what we have to do is we have to add two different constructors. And the first one is going to have two different parameters. So the first parameter will take in an incoming SP fields collection object. We'll call that fields. The second one is going to be a string, which is going to be the field name. Now, the main reason that we have to add this and the next constructor is that SharePoint creates instances from our field type using constructors with this parameter list and I have to be able to take the parameters that are passed to me and in the C-sharp syntax pass that to my underlying base classes constructor that has the same parameter list. When it comes time to actually implement the constructor I don't even have to provide any implementation. Now I have to provide a second constructor that instead of having two parameters has three for type name and display name display name is also a string parameter and then down below here I simply take the parameters passed to me and I pass them inside the base class constructor okay so now that I've provided those two let's provide just a common hello world implementation and so I'm gonna override First of all, the default value. Note that I can override both the set and the get block. 
but I'm just going to override the get block. And when it's time for the default value, let's say that our product codes are four character codes, always starting with P. So we'll say P001 is going to be the default value. And the second method that I'm going to override is the get validated string. Now, there's several different methods that you can override. And as you get better at creating custom field types, you can see there might be reasons to override get field value as HTML, as text, get field value for edit. In this case, we're going to override get validated string. And what we're going to do is this is a method that gets called just before the entry is pushed into the content database. And so I can perform validations here. In this case, we're just going to, you know, take the value that's been passed to us, which is the value parameter. We'll call to string on that. And whatever they have passed in, I'm going to make sure it gets bounced to uppercase before we store it inside here. So here I'm just kind of in between the user trying to save data and the content database. And I'm just going to process it by bouncing it to uppercase. Now that we have that inside there, we're going to go ahead and add in a <clears throat> new file into our project. Now that you've seen this code inside here with a pretty simple beginning implementation, the second item that we have to add in is going to be an XML file that follows a certain naming convention that has to be pushed to a specific directory. So I'm going to add a new mapped folder. And whenever we want to deploy a custom field type, inside the SharePoint root, inside the template directory, is a directory with the name of XML. So I'm going to create a map folder based on this. Now note that the SharePoint tools will automatically create a child directory that has the same name as the project inside there. But in this case, it's not going to work. I'm going to go ahead and delete that file. And inside here, we're going to add a new item. And in particular, we're going to add a XML file. And the name of this XML file is going to start with FLDTYPES, or field types underscore. And then we could have basically anything that we want. But I'm going to give it the same name as the project, which is wingtip custom fields. And now that we have this XML file, we just need to add some text inside there. But basically, as we deploy the solution package, pushing this file out into the SharePoint root templates XML directory and giving it a file name that starts with field types and ends with XML is what's required. Now I have a friendly starter file I'm going to use. I'm going to bring up Notepad and bring up a text file that I created before just so I can give you a starting point for creating the custom field type and pushing out the XML definition for it. We have a field types element with a field type element inside. And so for the type name, I'll say product code. And next, I have to specify which of the underlying field types I've inherited from, SP field text. So I'll put text inside there. Now the display name will say product code. And in this case, because it's a display name, I'll put a space. And then the next thing we're going to fill out is the short description. This gets shown to users when they see the different field types. So I'll say wingtip product code. Now, we also have the, the need to put the field type class. And so in this case, it's going to be wingtip custom fields dot product code. And in addition to having product code, the namespace qualified name, we also need the assembly name. But the SharePoint tools provides the convenience of inside of an XML file putting dollar sign SharePoint dot project dot assembly full name dollar sign. And as it builds the solution package and 
pushes this file inside the cab file that is the solution package, it's going to substitute in the actual assembly name. Okay, so now that we have these pieces in place, let's go ahead and show the output window. So we'll do a Control Alt O. And now we'll come down and we'll go ahead and we'll do a deploy. And what we should see is that it's going to rebuild the solution package. It's going to push it out into the farm. And in that case right here, when it's time for us to add a new product code field, what we should now be able to see, as I come back here and take a look one more time at the field types file, if I go to our products list, and inside of products, we'll go ahead and we will go to lists, we'll go to lists settings, and we're going to go ahead and click click on create column and down here I can see wingtip product code and once again that points back to the fact that we have this field types file and we push the field types file out into the correct directory and the wingtip product code the type short description is what shows up here so now let's go ahead and add this new column and we'll call it product code and we'll go ahead and we'll choose OK. And so now that I have that, let's go ahead and create our first product at Wingtip Toys. And we have a new toy called the Cyber Blaster. And that's going to be product P001. But just for fun, let's see what happens if we say A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. And we'll go ahead and choose OK. And as we see, our product code got bounced uppercase. So what we've seen so far, let's go back and take a look at product code, is that we can specify a default value, and also in get validated string, which is kind of a pipeline that we're intercepting the user trying to write his or her input to the content database, and we were just intercepting, taking the value, bouncing it to uppercase, and allowing the data to be saved inside there. Well, let's look at something else. You know, maybe I have an issue with validation. So inside of get validated string, let's go ahead and check the value. And so first of all, we'll say if, and we'll say if the value dot to string, and let's say that that has a need to start with. And when I look at this, we'll make sure that it starts with the letter P. Now, I also want to do a string comparison that is going to be case insensitive in this case. But now that we have this if statement right here, I want to make sure that if it does not start with an uppercase P, well, that's a validation problem as far as I'm concerned. So I'm going to throw an exception, and in particular, the SP field validation exception is what I'm going to throw. And let's go ahead and put in some type of error message, you know, such as, uh, you know, product code must start with P. Um, so now that we've thrown an exception for you know, one particular problem. Let's say that there's a second validation that we're going to have. Uh, and if, and we're going to say value dot to string dot length. And if we look at the length of what's brought in, and if that is not equal to four, well, that's going to valid, that's going to violate our data integrity as well. So in this case, if it doesn't equal four, we also want to complain once again by throwing a new SP field validation exception. And this time we'll say product code must be four characters. Now we've got our code. 
we've written this. Let's once again go ahead and test our work to see if our validation logic is going to be in place. Let's go back here. Let's go ahead and choose Deploy. And now that we've done a deploy and the deploy has succeeded, let's go back and test our work. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and do a refresh just to make sure that I reinitialize the SharePoint worker process so we can go ahead and test our code. And in this case right here, we're going to add in a new product. And at Wingtip Toys, we've just had a new breakthrough. So we have the new Cyber Blaster 2. In this case right here, let's put a product code that starts with a X001. And we'll go ahead and try to save. And what we're going to see here is that because I looked at the incoming value, determined it was invalid, I threw an SP field validation exception with product code must start with a P. And basically, that is the error message that's automatically shown to the user. Now, let's say that we have a P0, and now the user is going to try to save this, but with the wrong number. And so notice that my error message, error message changes to product code must be four characters. And in this case, we'll have P002. So the value now doesn't violate my integrity constraints, and we're able to take that and save it inside there.